huge congrats on the film thus far. Thank you. Uh, lots of Golden Globe attention, potential Oscar uh, attention coming coming soon. Fingers crossed. Uh, how have you How have you found the whole promoting of this movie? Because you're in a award season where you kind of talk about the film more than maybe you would if you were doing a big summer movie because it seems that for months you need to talk about the same movie although it's not a bad film to talk about i mean that's that's exactly correct at the end of the day this was like a a great film to work on um and uh just an amazing experience and so I, i'm kind of like delighted to talk about it with people um it's, you know, it's different than like, you know, promoting something in the theater because you have to go back and do the show that night. So you're constantly living in it. So I guess the 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 nice thing is, is that I, I'm kind of divorced from the movie in this way because we shot it three years ago at this point. So, you know, I'm I'm removed, uh, you know, and I just get to talk about this thing that happened this summer camp that I joined you know three years ago that was a great experience you know <laughs> is it strange the whole kind of the fact that it was three years ago because again you know obviously lots of things out of everybody's hands obviously but sure. is it strange to, to be talking about it three years ago it sounds like it was such a good experience that you you'd still be talking about it in 50 years i'm sure if someone asked yeah you. <laughs> yeah i mean you know, there's there will always be anecdotes i think told about this experience from all of us uh about the making of this movie and the time that we had making it and uh um, I, I mean, it yeah, like it was just such a joyous experience in making it. Um, just not only being in love with this story and and you know the history of it, but I think artistically uh, very fulfilling. Uh, I think for everyone involved and and the um, the amount of uh, uh, giving that uh, Stephen really gave to all of us, the amount of empowerment that he really uh, allowed for us to all like take charge of uh, our departments, you know, and, and uh, give him our best work. It, it was just such a great experience. Take me back to, well, it would be probably more than three years now. It'd be maybe four years ago. I don't know if you've seen, but over the weekend, Rachel was on Graham Norton and she talked about how she auditioned and her experiences and how much she wanted to get the role. How did that kind of play out for you? Did you have six months of auditioning, a year of auditioning? How, yeah. did, it, how did it go down for you? Yeah, I had first submitted a tape with casting in February of 2018. Uh, and then I submitted another tape like June or July of 2018. And finally was in the room with Steven November of 2018. And then there was a lot of uh ups in the airs and scheduling and conflicts and trying to you know finagle or is it gonna happen is it not gonna happen and that really didn't pull the trigger on it until february i was working on a film and i got a call from my agent on a friday being saying can you be there at rehearsal on monday and that's when i knew i got the job i was like okay this is actually happening now so it was, it was quite quite the dramatic yes unraveling of it all <laughs> what was your reaction when you when you found out because rachel said she dropped in quite a few swear words was that the same for, for you no kind of i mean for me it was it was me for you know i i knew that steven wanted me in november ba based off of the the energy in the room and kind of what was being discussed and talked about and I knew that he wanted me and I knew that it was all just going to be a logistical nightmare and trying to just figure out whether or not it could actually happen. Uh, and, and that's what it was. It was just kind of this long played out buildup of will it, won't it, will it, won't it. And so when it finally was, you know, the green light show up on to rehearsal on Monday, just, okay, I guess we're doing this, you know, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. And what's the, I mean, the lure of West Side Story, I mean, there's always remakes and reimaginings of, of certain things, but it feels like West Side Story, even though it is a classic and obviously the show and the, the film, there's something very special about this one because of Stephen's love for the material. And it's the one thing he's kind of always wanted to do. That must have been, as you said before, it must have been really infectious. And you must have from day one must have gone. This is not just special, but we have to make sure that we bring our A game because this is special to Stephen in many, many ways. Yeah. And not just, I mean, it's special to, I knew that it was 
it's certainly special to me. Um, and I think I can go and speak for the rest of the cast and, and Tony and that it is, it holds a very special place in our hearts for all of us theater people, uh, you know, and uh, that's why it is at least on stage told over and over and over again um, and reapproached. Um, so given the opportunity to, of course, do the film adaptation of it, uh, just heightens it just a little bit more. Um, but it's always exciting because this story holds such a dear place in all of our hearts and it's universal and it's timeless and it, uh, you know, it, it just does something for all of us that we can't help but be drawn and fall in love with it all. And I guess that kind of goes back to Shakespeare, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I, will, I will drop in that you still have to impress the biggest critic in the world, which is my mum, because she hasn't had the chance to, to see it yet. And it is, since I was little, one of the only things, that, one of the two things she talks about that and Greece were like the most important things to her. <laughs> so you still got the most important critic to please. Yeah, but I'm sure, I'm sure she had the reaction of a few people, I guess, where she was like, are we making West Side Story? Yeah. That's weird. But then yeah. I said, oh, Steven Spielberg's directed that. And she was like, oh, oh. Well. Yeah, it's like, oh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll Fingers see what she does. <laughs> we can win her over. Fingers crossed. I'm sure you will. Um, tell me about the lure of Riff. Now, was this was this the character you were always kind of auditioning for? Or was there a, a change? Or did you, was it kind of a blanket audition where you just wanted to be part of the film? Or was it always Riff? And if so, yeah. what, what's the lure of him to you as a, as a performer? Initially, casting asked if I would submit a tape and come into their office uh, for Tony. Um, so I did that. That was in February of that 2019. That was the initial, um, audition of it. And I was just coming, I was about to leave Dear Evan Hansen at the time. So I was, I had like long hair and black fingernail polish and, you know, <laughs> very <laughs> different Tony. Um, and, um, and then it wasn't until that June or July date that summer where they were actually asking me if I would actually come in for a riff. And uh, there was something in me, um, you know, as an actor, you, you put your thing out there and you let it go and you just say, eh, it is what it is. Or you try your best to divorce yourself from any outcomes or expectations of the thing. So after that tape for Tony, okay, forget about it. Then the summer they were saying, well, actually we would like you to come in for riff. And there was something in me that like deep in me that ignited a little bit and got very excited. Um, but you know, you put the tape together and you let it go. And then they asked, okay, well they're interested but you'd have to dance in November. And I, I tried to get out of dancing. I called my agent and said, do I really have to? Like, can I just come in and like do the scene and maybe sing a song, but just, you know, work on the scene work. And uh, my agent said to me, it's West Side Story, Mike. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I gritted my teeth, you know, I grinned and bear it and went in there and did my best. And um, but yeah, I mean, growing up with the film, seeing it on stage, Riff has always been, uh, I think, a character that everyone kind of can't help but be magnetically drawn to everyone's drawn to Mercutio in that way. There's just that charisma and that energy about that character that you just can't help but fall in love with. And, uh, and in West Side Story and in this adaptation with Tony, I mean, Tony Kushner really gave me a huge gift in, in making it go deeper and more nuanced and complicated. And, um, you know, that for me, he just kind of gave me the football and let me run with it. Yeah, and it is immediate as well with Riff because the first, you know, in the first ten minutes with the opening number and everything else, you do kind of get that the magnetism kind of bleeds off the screen quite quickly in terms of that, like you say, he's a he's a bit of a bad boy, but also people seem to be drawn to him and his affection for the people around him, even if yeah. there is these partings. What was it like to be part of this cast? Because uh, you've got David and obviously Rita's Rita's come back, but then you've got. Ariana, who is just incredible in the film, Rachel, everybody else in there as well. It must have been so infectious to be around all those amazing performers. It was. It really was. And, you know, on my end, my experience with the rehearsal process and the filmmaking, it really was uh, it really was me. And of course, working with 
David and Ariana and Ansel and Rachel and Rita, of course, all of them, but where my, my uh, process or the building of that role really was with those jets, those 15 guys. Uh, and we just had the time of our life. I, I took them all out uh, first after the first rehearsal day, we all got beers and uh, I wanted them to feel a real sense of ownership of this version of it. I wanted them, a lot of them have never, a lot of them were just dancers. None of them had done a film before. None of them have done any sort of acting before. Um, and I didn't want them to feel like they had to. I just wanted them to really feel like they were a part of each other's lives in a very deep and meaningful way. And uh, I just wanted everyone to uh, spend time together. And so I brought up this idea with them of doing what I called jet-tivities, which was uh, we all had to choose some activity. Every single one of us had to choose some sort of activity. And no matter what it was, we all had to do it. And uh, we did a lot of shenanigans that summer, man. We had a really great time just running around <laughs> New York. It was great. It was that great. Like, yeah. We did weird things like LAR LARPing. Have you ever heard of LARPing? I have not heard of LARPing. No. Live action role play. It's a bunch of guys who go to a park, guys and gals and people of all sorts and walks of life. They go to a park and uh, they do this like reenactment of a war and so they're all carrying these uh, like cushion swords and spears oh and bows yeah, and I, have, I, have, I have i've seen it in uh just, role models in role yeah, models and role they models. just Bingo beat the great. crap out of each other <laughs> i mean they beat the crap out of each other <laughs> it's a lot of fun and very painful yeah that's the sort of thing that kind of sets you up for the battle shall we say yeah. <laughs> exactly. Played laser tag with each other. We, you know, we got a house upstate with the sharks and hung out for a weekend. That sounds fun. like fun. It's those experiences that endure yeah. for you guys as performers, isn't it? When you get those. Yeah. And so, you know, I really felt the four months leading up to shooting, uh, that was such a gift having that amount of time and with those group of guys, as opposed to just showing up on set day one and being like, we're this family. Mm. We really crafted that from the beginning. So when the cameras were rolling, it was just there. It was there. Yeah. Already. Nothing else had to happen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As a final question then, what for you in the, in the film and on the show, were you performing it in the film? What was your, what's your favorite kind of song or, or, or the kind of dance number that goes alongside it that, that's your favorite from 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 either your version or from West Side Story in general that I, that I was in, or just in general with West Side. Well, let's the for as as riff, shall we say? Uh, what, what's yeah. your what was your favorite one to to perform? Uh, well, a big fun one, just a fun one because it had everyone involved. Was the dance at the gym? Mm. Um, so much fun and learning the choreography for that and actually executing that on the through the week uh, with everybody was so much fun. Um, but in terms of ar artistic uh, uh, fulfillment, I, I really have to say cool uh, mm. because of the different take on it and, you know, the, 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 the story arc that Tony and Justin and Ansel and myself and Steven wanted to tell within that story of the their two bond of seeing the beginning and the middle and the end of their real of their relationship. Uh, and putting that into a dance and and doing that it was a it was a challenging and um and quite a joy to do absolutely fantastic well listen thank you so much for your time absolutely pleasure talking to you and yeah. uh yeah continued good luck with the film going into award season let's see shall we <laughs> thank you scott thank nice you so much for your time ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!